It has been said that on Eid al-Fitr, it seems as though all the noise suppressed for a whole month has concentrated itself within one night. Yeah, well, maybe that's just the sound of all the bombs going off. Because Eid is well known to be a time when the most violent reactions happen. It is certainly a time for great celebration and joy. Could be that the joy has to do with the fact that you've survived another year without being bombed to smithereens, couldn't it? As we're seeing in Muslim communities across the country today. But of course, the end of the holy month of Ramadan. What do you mean, the holy month of Ramadan? Yeah, it's holy to Muslims. It isn't holy to anyone else. Do you know, I get really annoyed when I hear people, mainly on the BBC, referring to the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, he's a prophet to Muslims. He's not a prophet to anyone else. So he's not the Prophet Muhammad as far as we are concerned. He is Muhammad, the Prophet of the Muslims. And just the same way, Ramadan is a month holy to Muslims, not to anyone else. It isn't the holy month of Ramadan to Theresa May. It's about more than simply having fun. Well, no, it's not about having fun if you've been blown up, is it? It's a time for Muslims to come together with family, friends and neighbours. It's an opportunity for spiritual renewal. Actually, it's Ramadan that's the time for spiritual renewal, not Eid. Eid is the after party. A chance to help those less fortunate and give thanks for all that is good in your life. To Muslims, yes it is. But why is she making it sound as if it's something for everybody else as well? Yeah, we can say Eid Mubarak to a Muslim neighbour, nothing wrong with that. But it isn't a time for us to think about spiritual renewal and that's, uh, that's that. And it is an opportunity for all of us here in the UK. What? to reflect on and celebrate the incredible contribution to our national life made by Britain's three million Muslims. Now I find that particularly interesting because what she's saying here is that there are three million Muslims in the country. For those three million she's making this extra special broadcast. That's one thing. There are three million Muslims in Britain and 60 million people and that's a very small percentage. Why is she making this special broadcast? But even more than that, I think there's something else here. I think she's reminding people that there are three million Muslims for a reason I've given earlier in other videos, that because some Muslims make such a terrible nuisance of themselves and do such awful things, people have the idea that there are more Muslims than there actually are. And she wanted to get that message across that there are only three million. Fine. She wanted to tell everybody, don't panic. There are only three million Muslims here. That was a message not to the Muslims, but to the non-Muslims who may be afraid that they're being taken over. It's a palliative, something to calm us down. But the fact is that a substantial proportion of those three million Muslims are causing tremendous upheaval in this society. They are also showing a tremendous hatred against British society, which most British people find very uncomfortable and extremely worrying. In every corner of the country and every walk of life. Oh yes, for sure. I came off my horse a couple of years ago and ended up in hospital and I was very glad of the doctor who was looking after me who I assume was a Muslim. But that's not what we're talking about here, is it? There are many Jews who have made a contribution to 
British society, in fact, I'd say probably for all their much smaller numbers, Jews have contributed far more to British society than anything the Muslims have done to date. And yet I don't see any particular broadcasts from Theresa May on the occasion of, what, the Jewish New Year or something like that. No, there's something else going on here. British Muslims are making a positive contribution to their communities and their country, playing their part in making this a successful, diverse nation that we can all be proud of. We can be proud of the British civilization we have. And Muslims have played a part in that. But they haven't played the sort of part that Theresa May is trying to imply they have. I'm sorry, guys, but they haven't. So as the Eid outfits are chosen, the presents are wrapped and the sweet treats are prepared. Let us all take a moment to give thanks. So Eid is now a British holiday, is it? Let's all take a moment so all of us should celebrate Eid. Yeah? Not just for what is good in our lives, but for the millions of British Muslims who enrich the lives of so many. So we have to thank God for the Muslims, have we? No, we have to thank God or whatever for any person who contributes to this society. And we don't need a special mention of Muslims, do we? We just need to remember that this is Britain and has a British society. And we shouldn't be making special concessions to one religious group or the other. Eid Mubarak. I want to point something out here. A few people have said how robotic Theresa May seems to be in this particular speech. Well, she does seem a little uncomfortable, and so she should be. But maybe that's because of the chain around her neck. Now, she may say, oh, she just chose that particular piece of jewellery because it happened to go with her dress. I don't know. I reckon there's something maybe a bit creepy about her choice of bling in this case. I was talking earlier on about slavery in this country, which people are sweeping under the carpet and calling by other names. I think it's a bit odd that the British Prime Minister comes on and makes a Ramadan greeting and she's wearing a chain around her neck. <laughs>